Hello. We Hello, Till. We have something in common. You make clocks, and I investigate clocks. And we have another thing in common. Um, I always say I don't investigate clocks because in reality, these biological clocks are not just clocks. And you say the same thing about your products too. Yes, I say the same thing. I say if <laughs> we make watches, then we have a problem. Something must be wrong. Uh, <laughs> and if we would make watches, we would not sell. Because who needs a watch? Nobody. Uh, and that's <laughs> the main problem we have solved many years ago when we decided we should stop making watches. We should stop making watches to look what time it is. We should make watches to look the watch, <laughs> not the time. <laughs> and that's a very big difference if you look at the watch or you look at the time. Uh, <laughs> to bring it to the extreme, because some people were still looking at the wa at time. So to help people not to look at time too much, we made watches that was that were not giving you time. <laughs> the, the watch was giving you your time, and not the. Uh, astronomic time, which means everybody could <laughs> regulate its watch and say one hour should be 37 minutes and not 60. Today I'm gone for 37 minutes per hour. And the watch would tell you exactly <laughs> what time it is on your time. Or if it was <laughs> a very happy day, you would say, okay, watch. Give me now, one hour is two hours and 28 minutes. And the watch would happily give you every hour the time, your time. How, how do I do that? How do I tell this watch to give me two hours for 37 minutes? Uh, okay, this one only gives you one time, my time. The watch that gives you your time is too expensive for me. It retails for 320,000 euro. And I could not take it. Uh, across the border. The German uh, Tax. board taxes would have asked me, how come you travel with a 320,000 watch? So the watch I was talking about, which is called key of time, it's the key to time, um, is a very special piece that is done by Mr. Chind, mm -hmm. um, who was just here. Uh, I think in the whole world we have maybe 100 watchmakers among eight work with me, the others are in the competition, M not more than 100 people capable to make a very accurate watch that runs on the numbers of minutes per hour you decided. And the beauty is, should you need to go back to real time, you just push on the button and the hands would go and tell you the real time. So it would connect to real time and it would connect to your time. So you're always talking to your time. Um, I always also talk about my time, but it's slightly different um, because it is the time that our body makes, which is also very different to the time that we have to live by. And that's why we are all suffering from what I call social jet lag, because my time does not coincide with the time outside. Why doesn't your company make a watch? with all the senses that we know and with my know-how, that actually tells the people their time. Not just virtually 37 minutes per hour, but it's not midnight yet for me, because my physiology is not, has not woken up yet. So if you had the possibility, and that would probably be a clock that was a watch that would be a half a million, uh, which would be not good because it, uh, we needed traveling across borders, and if, we're, if the people at the borders take it away from us, they would be bad. It, yes, uh, I think it's impossible to do that watch in a concept of eternity. Uh, <laughs> whatever we produce, we are aiming to eternity in a box. 
whatever would not be eternal in a box, or call it watch case, Gehäuse uh, in German, a watch case, whatever would not be eternal would never be produced by us. We are producers of eternity in a box. Did that mean that in thousand years the watch will be repairable, as well as Big Ben in London celebrated 150 years and the clock is still working. While, where as soon as you enter technology for the body, you are in the electronics. And as soon as you are in electronics, in avant-garde technology, one day your product will be obsolete. And this is not coherent with our message. Our message is eternity in a box. Is that really a good slogan? Because the first, uh, associ we don't the first use associ it. association I have with eternity in a box is a completely different one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because because <laughs> it's a different one, but the only, met the only thing that matters for you and me is that we must be eternal when we are in the box, not before. And who is eternal in the box? Mozart. He's still alive. Picasso, he's still alive. Einstein's still alive. They are eternity in the box. So eternity in the box can be very positive. Uh, now I said box because my language is not English, and probably uh, uh, in, in a uh, better English we could find uh, another name than box. Uh, why not? But eternity in the box, that's why we live, to not enter the box without anything left behind us. And what can we leave behind us? What is eternal? Love. Love is eternal. And, lo <laughs> and, <laughs> and that, that is why we should live. And when I discovered on the 25th of June, 1967, during the show of the BBC called Our World, at 9 p.m., the first song started, and four gentlemen, four young kids, were saying, there is nothing you can do that cannot be done. That was a shock. We said, I was 19 years old, we said, now we know, the world will be ours, there is nothing we can do that cannot be done. That was the biggest optimism I ever got in my life. And then suddenly they sung, all you need is love, the Beatles. And from that day on, I know why I would live. I would live to make the best in my career, in my passion, which is watches. And I would live to die with a trace of love behind me. So the eternity in the box, finally, can be a fantastic a tool why we are alive, to prepare ourselves to eternity. Make, <laughs> make, make Sorry, it. was that the subject of the discussion of today? <laughs> I th I, I, I th I'm very open to any direction we take. But, um, <laughs> thank you, Till. Thank you. Thank but you. Um, you also like to talk about um, fantasy, we call it in German, innovation. Um, and uh, the curiosity, yeah. and um, I loved the the uh, um, the statement of yours, um, which I always find also so terrible. That the minute a, a child goes to school, it starts drawing differently, because it's big, as you said, it, it it is put into a frame. And um, the question is, how can you now? You're using it to make watches. Um, how can we s make a system? Um, where we give probably the highest salary to the earliest teachers so that they don't destroy what you say is our biggest source for love. How? Yes, uh, you are so right. God damn, you are so right. Um, we must be careful to forgive mistakes. In the first years of children, they are punished <laughs> when they do mistakes at home, education, in church, if they go to church, 
uh, and in school. And just not to forgive mistakes is a catastrophe for your character because you lose trust in yourself. And all, what you need most in life is trust you. Come on, you trust yourself and do mistakes. Why, Papa, can I do mistakes? Because every mistake helps you to come further to success. The mistake is a learning process. The failure is a learning process. Only if you are afraid and not active, then you don't do mistakes. But as long as you trust yourself, and as long as you know your boss, your parents, your teacher will forgive failures, then you have courage. Then you can be an entrepreneur. Because being an entrepreneur means having the courage to be wrong. Having the courage to say one day, hey, guys, we have to change 45 degrees our direction. That can only come to children when we teach them that the mistake is a learning process. OK, two times the same mistake is not anymore a learning process. It's a process that you are stupid. Because you repeat the same mistake. Why? It means you haven't understood. Maybe then you have to forgive twice. In my company, we forgive always two times. S same mistake, you repeat it only once. If you do it three times, we send you to the competition, to another brand, <laughs> where you can help. <laughs> so we should invent a new word. A mistake or failure are wrong words for the, for the things we, we should teach people. And that is embrace the mistake. Make it your tool. Yes. May, and reverse it. Uh, from a defeat, transform a defeat in a victory. You know, 50 years ago uh, in America, they used to uh, take sport as a kind of education tool, which is very good. I still believe it's, it's the best way to educate people today. Because in sport, you learn how you transform the defeat of yesterday into the victory of tomorrow. And that's life. If you can transform uh, failures in victories, but then you will be successful in life. That's it. That's the secret. Transform what is wrong in right. Transform what is bad in good. Transform a, a failure into a, a victory. So far, I've been very nice to you because I gave you things that you um, actually know. But that I'm now provoking you and asking, asking a question concerning your philosophy con um, um, uh, in reference to watches. You're saying you're building a world, you're be building a virtual world, and you're only using this old tool, because it was a tool of, of the watch, to um, represent new ideas and so forth. So my provocative question is, I sometimes drive through neighborhoods where people use a lovely old wheelbarrow, for example, and put geraniums in it, which is sort of a transformation of something that was useful and beautiful into something that is actually quite useless and not so beautiful. But that's not what you're doing. But in, isn't it in principle the same thing that you are planting geraniums into wheelbarrows? We do the same thing then uh, I would say uh, Banksy, the artist, he's using <laughs> a wall and paint and uh, uh, painter, painter, uh, paint, uh, paint, a farbe, farbe, paint, a paint uh, to make art. We cannot use paint <laughs> for our watches, so we use the way to make watches. So for us, the what we call the watchmaking art is the field of our expressions. So we make art with the watchmaking art. Picasso made art with the paint and the pencil. <laughs> uh, so th that in that sense, and I think we are quite innovative, nobody ever used the watchmaking art to make art. They were using the watchmaking art to make watchmaking art. Mm -hmm. but and the watchmaking art, always rational, always accuracy, always 
every second. Da, 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 da. And we said, come on, that's over. If somebody wants really accuracy, he buys an Apple Watch. And he got, he get, uh, or he takes his phone. So we have now, with an art that started in Switzerland in 1601, we use these 400 years of tradition, of heritage, to make a real art. And art is irrational. And that's why art is so beautiful. What is rational, we have it every day. The irrationality is the ultimate luxury in life. <laughs> and eventually, if you dream, with, and the dream is irrational, and maybe one day you can make your irrational dream r real, that's, then you have achieved something fantastic. And this is what we try to do. We produce irrationality you can dream of. Which is, of course, not new, because that's what the brain has done for millions of years, um, or thousands of years. Because all I'm sending you is not even information. I'm sending you uh, sound waves. And what you are doing in your brain with my sound waves is entirely in your virtual world. We have become quite good in interpreting other people so that we do understand them. Um, but in, in effect, I'm just sending you sound waves. And the rest you are dealing with and you're building up a virtual world. So is that the, the staffelei of, of, the, of the clock yes. you're doing? you giving me the guitar and I play fantastic sounds. Jimi Hendrix. Phenomenal. <laughs> so you need both. I need you. <laughs> and then uh, I will uh, play. And I love this idea. This is the strength of people when they come together. Uh, this is the magic of humanity. Uh, when we are two, we are not two people. We are much more than two. <laughs> if, and that is what people have sometimes difficulty to understand. I, my, my, one of my, I have five children. One, two will get married. One this year, one other next year. I told him yesterday, the day you get married, how many people will you be? He said to me, two, my wife and myself. I said, no. Yeah, yeah, we will have children. I said, no, 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 before you have children, how many people are you? He said, two, Papa. I said, no, you are three people. Because you are you, she is she. That's one, two. And then you have the couple. And the couple, when the two are together, is also a person. So you have to spend time for she, you have to spend time for you, and you have to spend time for the couple. And my son said to me, Merde, uh, uh, <laughs> that was French. Uh, <laughs> you Scheiße. are so right, Papa. And I said, yes, I'm happy I'm right. If you will remember this, probably you will be with your wife for the next 50 years. Is, is that maybe the reason why it's so difficult to keep up a mistress? Because it's not just another person. <laughs> the problem of the mistress, the problem of the mistress is that you betray yourself. <laughs> By having a mistress, you betray your wife. <laughs> but the first guy you betray is yourself. And that's terrible to live while lying to you. And, you <laughs> and that's if you could have a mistress without lying to you, without betraying yourself. Everybody would have one. No, it wouldn't be. A <laughs> so sorry. But it's impossible. <laughs> it wouldn't be a mistress. Um, <laughs> Yes, it would be your wife. And when your wife is your mistress, then you are, it's beautiful. <laughs> I think there's nothing to add. <laughs> La last question, last question. What's your, what's your real future goal concerning these watches? Is that I am now 66, I will be 67. Is that my team will do better than me? And if this team, which I have at Hublot, can do better than me, that means I was a good boss. Because a good entrepreneur is the one who creates or who promotes people. And once he leaves, these people must, wow, explode. And these people must show the entrepreneur, hey, look, boss, now we do it our way, and we are even better than you. That's the success.
Is that the trace trail of love that you yes, have? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much.